Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the LCS Challengers League Summer Split regular season. But this is the last day of the entire split, gentlemen. My name is Smax, and I'm joined by my very good friends, Deserex and Beatdown Boulevard. And uh, I'm here hosting all the way from the qualifier stream, ready to see what fresh meat we have in the promotion tournament. Uh, gentlemen, how are we doing today? Good choice of words. Concerned. I'm yeah. a little concerned for whoever no. gets sent to that tournament now. I don't know what are you guys doing there. <laughs> I mean, you saw a spring split, right? We we've got some we've got That's some true. fighters down there. We pro to three teams, so we'll see what happens in the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, th th those tournaments are some of the more exciting ones for me personally because the storylines really do climax there. I, I know Summer, you were in tears last time uh, we <laughs> went through it, and uh, you know, yeah. hopefully, we can get those feelings coming out again. Yes, I absolutely was. I was also in tears with our our little content segment that we had planned for this weekend. Uh, I got to take a take a bit of a journey to the practice tool to play some jungle clears with some of our top junglers in the NACL. Let's take a look at which one of them is the fastest. Okay, so just all six blue side cams in any order, any order, yeah, that's fine? Yep. Uh, okay. You can look at the other players' screens if you want to, <laughs> but uh, like I said, you can you can just do whatever Let me see what Perry's doing desires. there. Yeah, I don't want to reveal my strat. <laughs> I can't reveal to anyone. What, what am I, what am I going to start, guys? <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. All right, let the first clear commence. Three, two, one, go. Okay, we're, we're starting things off strong. So... I'm noticing a big difference immediately. Heal, you have teleport. Nobody yeah, it's some secret tech. I'm, we'll see. I'm not sure if it's good. Okay. Honestly, where where yeah. do you plan on teleporting to? Nobody else has this. To this tower, tier two top. Oh, okay, okay. That's crazy. I didn't even think about using f summoner spells, man. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to find a way oh. to use flash eventually, right? So. Oh. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Mir, you're the only one who started red buff. Tell me about your strategy with red. Um, well, I haven't played Kane for like three years, so... <laughs> I think starting red would be the slowest <laughs> So I think starting red is looks like ideal for me. I will say, uh, Keel is already done with three camps and he's on wolves already. Ooh, we oh. got the flash from Parry. Oh, sh**. Keel, Keel, man. What do you got cooking? <laughs> I'm way too smart. All right, <laughs> maybe. Gil is pretty fast. You guys are all just done with your wolves now, though, so it's gonna be a photo finish, I think. Ooh, actually, Mir has a, a bit of an edge here because he does still have his smite. Um, oh, actually, Parry's is coming back up, so it's getting it's getting really really close. Oh! Oh, that was so close! I think I think it was Keel, then Perry, then Mir last. It was oh. so close though. It was really, really, really close. That was a photo finish, but I'm pretty sure Keel got it. Oh. Well, uh, <laughs> how did I lose? Man. I thought I have a perfect strategy with fleet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well. <laughs> Might have been the rune diff. Okay, I guess. okay, okay. So is it there's is there a victor? He has 310, I'm at also at 310. Well, it looks like Keel is still the reigning champion when it comes to jungle clears. If anyone remembers last year around this time, we had Keel play against a couple of our other junglers and he won all the clears back then as well. So, oh. I mean, it's pretty funny that he won the Kane one again. Uh, it, it was it was good to poke fun a bit at Parry though, because he used to be a Kane one trick. So yeah. <laughs> that was a good time. <laughs> was. I love it too, because we always talk about, I always talk about Keel, especially as a juggler mm. who's really efficient with his pathing, farming, not only taking camps, but also he's really good at finding windows to deny them for from his opponents. So I, it, it is 
not that surprising to me that he always wins out on these contests. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just going to say, we got to start putting something on the line for these contests now. Yeah. I, I want Kale to win something more. Mir, put that MVP trophy on the line from spring. Let's, oh, let's do hold that, on man. a let's second. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> MVP's not based on jungle clear. Let's relax a little. <laughs> no, no, it's on the line. We're putting the trophy on the line. Mir can still stay the MVP. The trophy is on the line. Oh. Well, if if clear speed is the factor when it comes to determining MVP, then we've got some pretty impressive players playing oh, today yes. in our very first matchup. As we take a look at the two matchups that we have today, those two junglers that you just saw neck and neck in that cane, clear, Keel and Perry are playing wildcard versus fear in our last match for both of them of the split. And then immediately after that, we have the big showdown to see oh, yeah. who will end up going to that promotion tournament, who will be our eighth seed in the playoffs. That is Maryville and Team Fish Taco. Uh, which one of these jumps out to you guys the most? I I'm kind of excited it's, for both. It's, it, it's I'm excited one. for both. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta just, we're, it's worth touching on that. That is no exaggeration, the most important match today yeah. because the only thing mm -hmm. that really matters that hasn't been determined yet is who our eighth spot yeah. is going to be. I mean, both Wildcard and Fear are secured right now to make it into playoffs, but there's only one more ticket left to the ball. So that last match, it is critical, man. Yeah, absolutely. As you can see right here with the standings, Maryville, Team Fish Taco, only one win separates the two of them. And Supernova's right in there as well. Supernova, luckily, will be playing before Maryville and Team Fish Taco, so luckily. we'll know some implications of that matchup beforehand. Yeah. yeah, lucky for us. Not lucky for Supernova. <laughs> they've got a they've got a lot of pressure over there. Yeah, they, Tune they got into FlyQuest against them. Yeah, ooh, that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty tough. Tune into LCS Challengers to check that out right about now. But yeah, we'll we'll get the the big bloodbath later on today. Maryville versus Team Fish Taco. I believe we also have a look at what could possibly happen with the playoffs uh, in general, with how the standings actually are playing out right now. This is what the yes. seedings would look like if it locked oh. immediately today. Yeah, and this is cool because this is going to be live updated, of course, as we get towards the end of the day here and at the end of our second series. I mean, one, we're going to know who our eight teams are going to be, and we'll have a pretty good idea of what the positions are going to be also. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of interesting seeing these matchups. I mean, one of them we're already about to get today in the Fear and Wild card one. <laughs> but uh, even seeing the matchups like TLC MU, MU sent a, a, a lot of talent over into the Tier 2 system, and more specifically, you know, APA, who got called up from Team Liquid Challengers just a moment ago. But it's exciting to uh, preview this and you know, scratch our chins on how we think it's going to play out. You know, rub our hands yes. together. Mm. Team Liquid also the only team that's fully locked, so pretty much all the other seedings there could go up or down one or two, depending on how today plays out. True. But before we see how the actual playoff bracket will be secured, we have some matches to play today, gentlemen. And our first match of the day is no slouch. Let's look over on the red corner. We've got mm. Wild Card Gaming. They gotta be no doubt one of the most exciting teams returning in summer from spring, a team who we praised a lot for being really good at team fighting, always playing together. We haven't yeah. really seen that exact wild card today. The addition of Zamudo is a welcome one. Just in the back half here in the second round, Robin, they are ironing out some kinks, but of course they will be in our playoffs regardless of today's results. And it's exciting to see how they're going to adapt today. And of course, how they're going to look when we get there. And, and they're still trying out new things, which is really shocking yeah. to me, especially really in the new last things. week. Zamudo <laughs> pulling out the Warwick yesterday Yesterday. Wild card, <laughs> they, they always got spicy picks. I, yeah, they always got spicy picks up their sleeve. Yeah, I know Zamudo has been really trying to make the rumble work and also make the picks into rumble work, which is what I think that Warwick was an attempt at. And, uh, you know, maybe Phillips got that dog in him as well, because on the other side of the rift, we've got Cincinnati Fear. And, you know, this is a really cool matchup because these were our top two provisional teams back right. in the spring split. Yeah. It seems like such a long time ago. And here they are competing again. And right next to each other in the standings as well, which makes this match have quite a bit of value onto it, uh, depending on who actually uh, takes the series. But for Cincinnati Fear, you know, they've been ironing out a lot to try and uh, improve a lot of their performances. They're definitely showing that they can play from behind, as they did in the Maryville game. But when they get leads, they can definitely steamroll ahead with them. I do like the way this team clicks. I do like the way this team moves together, and especially love the way that they are able to bring a 5v5 against one of the strongest 5v5 teams in the league. Mm. Yeah, and I gotta say, too, the thing with Fear is uh, 
There's also another team who I think has stumbled a little bit. They've had a lot of bigger changes when we talk about JJ coming in, when we talk about Philip coming through and things like that. But it is cool to see that kind of in the back half, I think they have started to gel really well, even if Fear sometimes have a, a couple oopsie moments. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're trying things out still. There's, yeah. It's always about improvement here in the NACL space. And I know that there is uh, there's a lot of improvement to be made in terms of the Very adaptation true. with the champions that are selected. Yeah. There's a lot of similarities in a lot of the players on these two rosters, but I will take a look specifically at the bottom lane where I do believe, Beat Down, you've, you've created a nice visual for us here. Yes, adapt or die. It's very interesting because both of these players, I think, have had somewhat similar years. It's just in the fact that both of these yeah. AD carries were very good performers in the spring split. I was really impressed with how both of them were playing. And I personally believe that they've had their stumbles here in summer, mm. trying to get used to new team dynamics and things like that. But lately, these last couple weeks, the second round Robin has been very good for them. And I was really interested in looking into how they've adapted to 1313 in particular mm. and you can kind of see the differences here i wanted to lay out the top five picks across the entire league on this patch and i wanted to see how these two have kind of adapted and you can see there are some similarities but uh some spicy picks came through <laughs> on both sides i mean we're all looking at the yasuo there from Manui, which he yeah. actually slapped on yeah i uh i i saw the Asuo game and I was so surprised Amazing. by just the level of play Minui was able to bring forward, especially in the early laning phase where he's just running down the bottom lane. <laughs> they bring damage in the first place, but oh, yeah, yeah it, it really does show you how flexible uh, both of these marksmen can be. And it, it's something that both of their teams can definitely rely on. Um, I, I, I really do like this matchup coming in because they do have similar trajectories. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely fair to say, and that's definitely where our eyes are on as far as these matchups are concerned in the lanes. Let's take a look at Lens in specific to start things off. I mean, this is a guy that, similar to Manui, did come up at the start of this year, previously played on that 100 Thieves Next roster, and I think it's fair to say that that roster had a, you know, a lot of star players on it. Not oh, yeah. really necessarily Lens at the time, you know, Snipers there, Insanities in the mix as well. And, yeah. uh, you know, Lens, I think, now is rightfully taking that more carry style that we always knew he could do. Yeah, and he really needed to this split in particular with how the addition of Samudo kind of changed a little bit of how wildcard play. Of course, we've talked about in past weeks how this team is a little desynced and not the wild card of old back in spring who were so good at team fighting, but Lens in particular has really stepped up when it mattered and has been a big impact on a lot of the wins that wild card have gotten in these recent weeks. Really good at maximizing the amount of damage that he can get out and just playing out his life really well too. One of the more standout members here of wild card uh, and his, his opponent as well. I mean, for for Minui in in the bot lane for Cincinnati Fear. I mean, like I said, there's a pretty similar trajectory. Both of these guys did start up at around the same time. This is their yeah. rookie year in the tier two space, and. I mean, we already saw that graphic where they've got some pretty interesting champions all across the board, too. I think there's there's a lot of cool stuff about both of them. It, it was really surprising to see the way this bot lane developed because yep. uh, you, you got to remember, Lens was the expected one. Don Bray was not. That's true. And uh, it took a very fast adaption between those two to actually click together and make sure that they were actually going to bring performances out for wildcard. But that's the thing. Don Bray fitted in sl like a glove for wildcard and for Lens to look so strong the way they have in the bottom lane. Yeah, Dombre's definitely been a very welcome addition to this wildcard roster. Someone who I was excited to get a shot here in the Tier 2 space, and he's been performing very well. You know, uh, we're, we're still missing Isles, I think, in, in the entire know, split, yeah. but I don't think wildcard necessarily is too sad about this with really strong performances from Don Bray. Again, looking across at the other side of the map, you know, Minui playing with a new support as well. Again, the similarities don't end uh, yeah. really ever uh, <laughs> playing down there with JJ. Let's talk a bit about Minui and take a look at some of his nice plays. I mean, Minui, uh, when you looked at him back on Spring Split, he was one of our most improved players on the season. Absolutely. People had this guy in the trash can starting off at the season, and mm -hmm. he proved everyone wrong. And I do like the expansion of his play that we've gotten so far. I mean, back then, he was playing a lot of poke champions, a lot of utility. Now he's really clutching it out on the Aphelios to get to the late game and be this Im big impactful factor that Aphelios can be uh, for Cincinnati Fair. 
Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm one of those people that had him very low ranking in the standings. <laughs> Me too. I thought, yeah, like we all thought we saw everything Manui had to offer here in League of Legends tier two, but he managed to shut all of us up. And I mean, that's a wrong I'm happy to swallow personally. Mm, I'm sure some yeah. of you feel the same. And yes. it, it, when you say, I want to clarify too, when Eric says one of our most improved players, Top two. He is my vote. Him down, of Kim course, down. also deserves a shout mm. in that regard. But it just really speaks to the growth that he has shown this year. And the fact that even though the beginning of the split was a little t uh, tough for Manui, he's really turned it up in the back half. Yeah. I want to take this time. I'm speaking directly to Manui right now because oh. I was definitely one of the people who had him at the bottom. I, I had like a, a power ranking thing that I made. <laughs> and I remember oh, yeah. there were 16 80 carries in, in the pool. I'm pretty 16. sure I had him literally 15th, and he's clowned me for that many, many times since then. And Manui, you were right. I was wrong. I'm very glad to see your improvement. I've told you already that I'm very proud of you, and I still am. I'm very, very proud of you. And uh, yeah, good job, Manui. And Go off, King. I'm sorry. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the rest of Fear, like you said, they have always been a, a 5v5 focused team with Manui yeah. as the AD carry position. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what they can do against a team like Wildcard. And luckily for us, we are about to see that because we have the draft ready for everybody. Cincinnati Fear, Wildcard Gaming, let's take it away for game number one. Or are we good? Okay, He's okay, okay. I'm just chilling right now. I'm just chilling right now. We're just okay, chilling a my mistake. Bit. Holding. Holding. Okay, now we're good. Now there we're it good. is. All right, all right. And I, I, I want to bring up the point as to why we're talking about Minui's development and growth, because you got to look at some of the old teams that Minui's been on. You know, it, yeah. it was an old AOE roster that was playing in UPL, not part of the main rosters, 300. Yeah. All these different attempts to get into Proving Grounds, which was our big tier two tournament last year. And yeah. they were all falling really, really flat. So we didn't have the greatest impression of Minui, which yeah. makes it that much more awesome when he shuts all our mouths up with performances as good as he's been doing. Absolutely, and that just continues throughout Summer Split, even though we, again, gotta acknowledge the stumbles that I was highlighting earlier, he's still a pretty strong performing player on this team. And the fact that the issues we've seen from him specifically aren't really just him alone. Cincinnati yeah. Fear have definitely gone through their fair share of growing pains. Because again, new top laner, new support, especially the loss of Trevor, who is a big voice for this team, a vocal leader that we all know and have heard them talk about. So that kind of adjustment takes a lot of time to get used to. And it is exciting to see that Fear have been able to bring that back. And, and kind of cool thing about the way Cincinnati Fear work, Minui actually does uh, support some of the shot calls for the early game, more specifically around neutral objectives, the Dragon. So he does have a voice within this squad alongside Perry and JJ. But now let's get into the draft as the uh, bands are now finishing up. Really focused in the bot side is going to be wild card with theirs. Uh, still splitting it out on a lot of those power picks for Cincinnati Fear. Yeah, and I mean, uh, we got to call out the Seraphine ban. They were the only team on the side of Fear who were getting bans against them for Seraphine. Last split, even though it's popped up a little bit, a lot of people still consider them yeah. the Seraphine team. First pick for Wildcard, it is going to be the Maokai. Really common. Uh, you've been seeing him all year, despite the nerfs, despite the changes. Still a really strong jungler, especially when you pair it with the Jace because of that engage, because of that peel with the Nature's Grasp. But this gives an instant pick over that Tristana was left wide open. And Shochi loves this champion. Tristana, powerful in the meta, but yeah. way more powerful in Shochi's hands, who absolutely loves to just rocket jump and try and get in the face of a lot of people when he's playing this. Yeah, he's had some incredible performances. I mean, Pentakill, I believe that 17 kill game, which is the tie for the most in the split, was and, when he was also playing the And Tristana. yesterday's John Cena performance. Yesterday, exactly. <laughs> and paired with the jungle that Perry is going to be running in the Sejuani. A lot of playmaking that Fear love to go for here. And we see on wildcard side, the Jace that oh. I was highlighting, going to be right coming in through for Saligo. Okay, so we're going in a poke direction so far. Assuming uh, we go for the poke Varus. Uh, I see the Jason. I think it uh, can signify that. Uh, strong front line so far. I think uh, Maokai is the right choice to have with this because you get a lot of control, uh, especially with that ultimate coming through. Final pick coming out for Cincinnati Fear. Yeah, and I'm curious. Are we going to see the support come through here? But instead, it is the hover. Could it actually be the Tristana bot? Ooh. Oh, the instant Silas. That one yeah. is, I mean, you know, you're pretty confident you're playing into the Jace. It is nice when you're playing into the Maokai as well, stealing that Nature's Rasp. 
offers you so much playmaking potential there for Shochi's side, and he's been a big standout playmaker for this team. So yeah. the, I mean, it fits. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious uh, what the game plan was in the grand scheme because there there are some good ultimates. I just don't think it's the best Silas uh, time to go for the Silas pick. Usually, you're waiting. Uh, to see a little bit more that's shown on the board and get something like an Alistair seen on the other side and be like, yeah, I want that ultimate. But uh, yeah. as we head into the second phase now, going to look at what we have drafted so far. We do have one solo lane coming out for fear. Well, the jungle. So support will still be targeted for wild card. And this is one of the things where I start to get a little bit concerned. If the Tristana is going mid, we've seen teams pinch the pool of Minui in the past. Right, but but it isn't. This is the the thing with the Silas too is that you love having melee solo laners as a Sejuani. You can get the E passive going through there with the permafrost. And at this point, you just want to remove champions that can kite you as Cincinnati Fierce composition. Because you look at Jace, you look at the Avaris, you have champions who have the highest mobility. You can get on top of them, especially with picks like Silas, Sedge, and of course Trist who can follow up. So I like that they are getting rid of things that can really hamper and also yeah. complement the composition that Wildcard are going for here. And when we see that last band come through from Wildcard, I wouldn't be surprised if it was another engaged support there. Oh, no, oh, going for the top side. Banning away Olaf from Philip. There. I mean, melee solo laner. That's what we were talking about. So you got some pretty good magic damage AD. You got a good front line. Now we can really just try to uh, diversify right now. And for Cincinnati Fear, it's sticking with the croc over onto the top side. That's a little concerning. I mean, oh no, never mind. They ban Rumble first rotation. It's good. I always get scared when I see the blind uh, Renekton for that exact reason. So Philip basically set up for success there. Zamudo. I mean, we've seen a lot of different options come through from him. Absolutely. I mean, just as far as yesterday with the Warwick. You got to imagine he's going to be going for something a little more stock standard this game, and it's going to be the Poppy. This is a lot of protection for uh, these poke champions that Wildcard have gra uh, grabbed. Yeah. Uh, oh, Ooh, that's nice. Whoa, I really okay. like that one. Tell me about it, B. Tell me about it. No, it's just nice because it goes with the poke that's already present for Wildcard side, and you have the disengage there from the Maokai, from the Poppy. You have a lot of ways that make it hard for fear to uh. go into your composition there. That steadfast presence is going to be getting a lot of value. That's all I'm going to say. Damn. So Cincinnati fear, I, they have no choice. This is the all in comp they've drafted for themselves. Yeah. They need something beefy. They need something that will survive the engage. Nautilus okay. isn't going to cut it. So JJ is going to go for the Leona. That can bring a lot of damage. The Leona passive is something I always talk about because oh, yeah. you, it, it's easy to underestimate. And uh, I remember back in the day, people used to take Corky when Corky could go back into the bottom lane uh, alongside Leona because the Gatling gun would just proc the passive all day, man. It was kind of nutty. But uh, as we do have these team comps finalized and now finished in, you do see that heavy, heavy poke coming out from Wildcard. Yeah. I especially love the fact that they have the Poppy to stop uh, Shochi's attempts at getting in or anyone else's attempts anyone. at getting in. But, uh, I do remember last time Shochi did have a hard time with the Poppy when he was on Akshan. Uh, not going to be the hardest time with the Silas, but you do have more mobility that can get blocked away. Yeah, I mean, I will say Silas is a better champion than Akshan, so yeah. he's still going to have a lot of value, <laughs> dashes or not. Fear, though! They have their work cut out for them this draft. They are going to need to find ways to get on top of Wild Card so that they can get their damage off, get their spells off, and win out these team fights. Wild Card, I mean, I'm favoring them a little bit when we get to that mid to late game Deserex, but it's going to come down to execution. Wild Card, we've been criticizing, but very desynced lately, not showing us that amazing team fighting coordination that we saw in spring. So there is room or fear to take advantage of. Oh man, I want to talk about the Riz, but Fear are about to show theirs, and apparently not the best Riz. It sent Lens flashing over the wall. Um, <laughs> you know, they could use some lessons from you, Rizzler. I mean, you know, you first lesson, you're going to fail sometimes. It happens. Uh, but you're getting the flash out of Lens. Oh, hold on. What is going on right now? Shochi just spots the Heimer and hops right on him. This, this is got to Fear. They're looking for a fight early. No, it's not just the fight, because the thing that Heimerdinger loves to do in lane in the support role, you right. need your team to walk with you and set up the yeah. turret. So Fear know this. Not Maybe only do they get Lens's flash out, but they've also set up some vision. You can see Parry is actually in the tri brush. We could see a late invade come through wow. here to try and pressure Lens, but it may be. Nope, he's just going to walk away. But either way, look at Manui, yeah. look at JJ. They're not going to leash their jungler. So this could actually be them getting that early pressure in a lane where you're usually getting poked out. 
Smart moves coming out very, very early on for Cincinnati Fear to make sure that their bottom lane isn't going to suffer to any regard. And uh, Minui being on that Tristana, getting that early, getting anything going means that if you are able to shove out this bottom lane of Wildcard or just hard engage on them like this with the yep. Zenith Blade right no onto flash, Lens. No flash. He's going down. We'll put down the cleanse. Nope. Not going to get him just yet. There is enough healing there from the potions. Would be three autos. I can see a little bit too deep under that tower. Right, that's it. Lens, no summoners. As soon as that W comes off of cooldown, Minui's gonna rocket jump back in there. And this is just a great answer from Fear overall in the early game to give Minui and JJ yeah. this opportunity to win a matchup where you're really not supposed to. And if they do win it out, it's a Tristana in the bottom lane. You oh, want plates, yeah. you are going to get plates, my dude. And that is why uh, we are going to be watching the jungle pathing to see if anyone wants to try and interfere with what's going on over here. I mean, it's going to be the top side available for kill at the moment, but he is finishing on the golems. And now the call over parry coming in through the oh. dragon pit. That's a really good ward. I missed who dropped it, but hold on. Oh, parry and kill fighting it out. Both junglers. It looks like Kill getting the better of the exchange until flash. the permafrost comes through and the rest of Wildcard positioning up right now. Is he going to go for the flash right now? Would be risky to go for because Perry has his own. Kill can't finish the job just yet, but here comes Lens and Donbrae fighting it out. 2v2 in the bottom lane. Jochi's Jay here. gets ignited. Zenith Blade onto him. Oh, Coming that's in it. is Jochi and there's the first blood. A reset from Minui to try and finish off the deal. Jochi will tank up the tower and it's a double kill. Wow. Jochi survives. Cincinnati Fear will lose one. But you know what? It's Dawnbrae who gets the kill, not Lens. The AD carry. Really aggressive early game where Fear get everything they could have hoped for. Wait. Look, Perry lived that whole out? situation there. I mean, he flashed. His oh, Q boy. must have come back up. But the point is, Fear are taking control of this early game against the bot lane that was going to be a struggle for them on paper. But that level yeah. one, the fact that Wildcard didn't support Dawnbrae setting up those Heimer turrets early. Lens losing his flash means this play works out. And I mean, look at this. It's well, a good it's ward that spots out parry. So Wildcard know that this gank was coming. They wanted to try and get the bot lane to help secure the kill. But parry, he runs away. He's basically going to survive this, but this gives the opening here. The cooldowns are back. No summoners on Lens. It's an easy pickup there, an easy double for Fear. Uh, frustrating for kill at the same time he burns flat. Now it's a Mudo wow. under attack at the top side. Steadfast presence buffers it. Now comes through. Zamudo will solo onto Philip in a 1v2 scenario. Gives another kill over to Shochi, but Zamudo. Oh, he levels up. Oh my up. god, wait, the Got level a up. more health. He There's lives. not that much mana. Oh, he levels up oh, as well. Mind. It's levels up all over the place, but it's enough for Shochi to take down Zamudo. I'm gonna be real, I don't know if that was actually worth for Zabuto. Giving kills to Shochi is not a good idea here on the Silas. Already he is being so much more active on the map here and yeah. he's gonna collect some of this farm so he's really not losing too too much philip tp's mid to catch that next wave and this early game couldn't be going better for fear yeah two zero one shochi only four minutes into this now five and we know how shochi likes to play sometimes with a little bit of ego sometimes with a lot of confidence he uh will take that starring role if he's placed into it and right now it's looking like that's the direction for him Wow, it is a small lead, of course, that Fear have gotten for themselves. Wild cards still have plenty of win conditions to play for here. They still have this poke comp that's going to be very hard for Fear to play into. But this early game, if that is any indication, Fear, I mean, clearly aren't afraid to push Wild Card. Get on top of them if you are the slightest bit out of position. And that could happen, especially with the concerns we've had with Wild Card and how they team fight. Lens does have his flash back up now, so you can get some pressure back for Wildcard in the bottom side. It's parry. Dungle camps are cleared out, so using uh, some of that power that Minui and JJ have established in that bottom lane, calling them over to start up the dragon. Scry comes out, Kill will spot this. And Kill looks like he wants to contest. He's looking for a smite fight. Saligo, as well as Lens, can get a lot of poke in if they want to uh, try and extend how long this is going to be. Same thing with Donbre and JJ, he's feeling that. But it's enough, that presence coming through, that long range damage means that Fear can't do Dragon. Right, and it looked like it was more for a pull. They tried to make the play onto Donbre, but he dodges the Zenith Blade. Fear, first Drake, I mean, with this bot lane and with the mid jungle matchup as well, it was gonna be really hard for you to secure it, no matter how good your level one was. Instead, 
Fear should set their sights on the top side. You have Rift yeah. Herald in a minute 30 something. I really favor them for looking at the strength of the top side of the map here for Cincinnati Fear. And Wild Card, they're going to be the ones who have that priority over the Drake. Dragon Soul, a big thing they focused on last split, had one of the highest dragon, uh, dragon control percentages across the entire league because it was the most important neutral for them. Interesting here, we're kind of doing some shenanigans uh, with the dragon. Oh, we just decided we don't care. Yeah. I thought Wildcard would have taken it right there, but they don't have eyes on Perry at the very moment. Perry is still setting up around that top side. His blue buff has spawned. Might stay there a bit longer to ensure that Rift Carol does go the way of Cincinnati Fear, as you were talking about. You also got a pretty hard shove coming in for uh, Shochi. So that means uh, Perry can go for an invade. Yeah, that's right. This 2 0 Silas definitely able to apply a lot of pressure here. You can see Shochi even stop the back because his jungler is going for this invade. Perry, of course is forced out. I like the idea to deny camps there. Try and delay Keel's level 6, especially with Harold coming up. Yeah. Not having access to that nature's grasp would make this fight impossible there for Wildcard. But you yeah. see the posturing? I'm waiting to see if JJ is recalling. Okay, he is. You're seeing both supports recall. Very likely because they are going to move to the top side yeah. and set up for this neutral. Oh, this Poppy is really hurting the Gator. Fill up Kind of struggling in some of the exchanges that both of these squads are having. Rift Herald is up, so Philip really oh. does need to take that recall as fast as yep. possible if Cincinnati Fear want to have positioning uh, around that Rift Herald. But look at Sligo go hammering away on the Shochi. And you can see, they actually have a really nice pink ward there on the bottom side of Keel's jungle. I think that's why Fear can still have the opportunity to go for this Herald. That's why they're comfortable focusing on farming their bot camps and letting Philip get that reset that he's going for at the moment here. So now it's going to be the late start of the Drake for Wildcard. But Fear, they shouldn't care about this. See, I'm watching Perry's positioning. Yeah, the setup is always really, really difficult when you're going into a Maokai. Because all and those saplings, man, they, they add up. And yeah, a Heimer only makes it worse. That's a lot of uh, basically zone control that you get out before any fight even really starts. So wild card. They dare him, but Cincinnati Fear won't take it. You can see Zamudo doing a bit of proxying. Has the information because Perry showed himself. And it's just going to go ahead and recall and walk back. Mm. Oh, here we go. On to Saligo. Cincinnati Fear find the collapse in the mid lane. Saligo burns out the flash, but there's another blink. And it comes out from Shochi as the shock blast takes him down. And better yet, Saligo flashes and dies. A summoner you can absolutely punish in the later minutes. But Fear, they're getting a lot of what they want yeah. in this early game here. Kills onto Shochi. Manui is sitting on one himself. And now they have a Herald to play for here. You can even see it. The only opportunity for Keel or Wildcard overall is to make a dive using Grass. this Nature's Grasp. Yeah, you see right there, Minui. Body blocking will be JJ to make sure that Minui wasn't going to be caught by that Nature's Grasp. But taking the damage right there oh. means the kill can finish the job. Oh man, Manui, he used the rocket jump a little too late to dodge the piercing arrow, and that set up Keel for the kill. So that's a good response here from Wildcard. You really wanted this, giving Lens an opportunity to get a wave in, denying waves from Manui, and that's Blakel into this Varus. You can see it, like he's going for the poke build. We talked about it in draft. He even has the Arcane Comet. So it's gonna be about how he can get to these item spikes so he can be that lethal poke threat that we talked about here. And the Fierce Credit, they played this one all right. You can see JJ sweeping and looking to see if Keel is in the area. But the problem you're going to see is that Piercing Arrow. Yeah. It was also very smart of Lens to really bide his time until Minui was completely focused on to kill. Yeah. It's surprising. Suddenly, a burst of damage. Oh, oh, let's get out. Let's leave. Not fast yeah. enough. Kill. He uh, lays prey over to the bot lane of Cincinnati Fear. And maybe things aren't all doom and gloom for Wildcard. They're making plays and they're finding uh, a lot of plates right now, especially with Samudo onto this top end. Uh, really conquering the Gator for the time being. And Shochi can't get onto Samudo just yet. Instead, just take his Keeper's Verdict and yeet the minions. <laughs> well, he's going to be able to... I mean, he doesn't get any of that wave, which is uh, a little unlucky. But props to Zamudo. He's really taking the screws to Philip in the yeah. top lane, forcing him to back there again. Solo laners for fear have swapped lanes for the moment. Phillip's going to go ahead and catch that mid wave.
wild card. I gotta say, despite the Herald going over to Fear, despite Fear leading in kills, you can see the CS difference that's coming in here in both mid and bottom. Really every lane if you look at it. And that's amounted to about 1,300 gold. So Fear, although they're getting kills, oh. hold on. Here we go, ultimate comes out. There's no flash for Saligo, so there's nowhere to go but to the respawn. Parry ganks in the mid lane and gets Shochi a kill. That's the punish I was talking about. Speaking of kills. Oh, Minui, you gotta be careful. Chain of Corruption goes out, able to get the cleanse, but Lens wow. will take him down. Don Bray falls in the process, but hey, Lens got the kill. Don Bray didn't get the other one. It was JJ who ends up claiming it, so it's a win for Lens. And more than that, it's just more waves you're denying from Minui. This 80 carry, you can see this incredible gold lead that Lens has over him right now. It's more than 30 CS. And now Philip. He this almost has Dominus. Zamudo's really taking it to Philip right now. And Zamudo was this player we were very excited about. We were wondering how he was going to work out on Wildcard, uh, replacing Moose Hater, who had excellent flanks on Wildcard, would always set up those really deep angles. Zamudo slots in just perfectly, especially with the uh, types of champions he likes to grab. And of course, oh, beasting Philip right now, but. Hey, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew because a gator uh -oh, can yeah, definitely chew did. more. And Zamudo, I'm sorry for the curse, brother. Oh, never mind. It's not a curse. You're fine. As the Keeper's Verdict comes out, Zamudo wow, he will lives. get back. Yeah, that's it. Dominus expires. Well played there from Zamudo. Looks like he ate just enough there with that play. And you can see that pressure he's applying here. He's going to go ahead and back. He has the teleport, and he's getting tankier and tankier now that he's built that Sunfire. It's going to be really hard four people for, on the side of fear to actually do damage to him. Forget about Philip. Even Manui, who is down to a level, who is down so much CS, he's also going to struggle. Oh, and the struggles are not stopping. That last piercing arrow taking out so much of his health. Now Cincinnati fear are setting up into the mid lane. Rift Herald goes down, so they're going to try and keep the snowball rolling for Shochi. 200 gold bounty, 302 at the moment. Dragon spawning in the next six seconds, and Zamudo still bringing the hurt to Philip. Oh, wow. Yeah, man, this has been brutal topside. It's just been a bloodbath there. Highly in favor for Zamudo. And as for the rest of the map, you talked about it. Continuing the snowball for Shochi. Can we take a look at the gold lead? Because surely Shochi is doing well on the side of Cincinnati Pier, but we already highlighted it. The other laners are the ones who are on the struggle bus. So there's a lot of pressure on Shochi, who, okay, oh, yeah. look at that. Most gold in the game at the moment. Shochi is going to have a lot of impact here, and he needs to perform with the amount of gold Fear have put in his pocket. Yeah, and the thing is, even with the gold on him, Lens is not that far off from catching up. No. So it, it doesn't put him in a spot where he's, like, taking over this game. He's still going to He's still gonna need to make more plays to actually have a chance for Cincinnati Fear to start to look in a better light. And that he does. Overall, of course, wild card. Very much in the lead, and their poke comp is doing them wonders at the moment here. Right now, they also have two Drakes that we haven't really touched on yet. It is a Chemtech Soul, which is a little unlucky, but it is still a buff that they can play for, and it is something that wild card do like to do. And even if it's Dragon, Baron, whatever, you said it, Eric, wild card get the first setup? I pity the fool who has to walk into that. <laughs> You're walking into arrows, you're walking into rockets, and eventually uh, a couple of uh, branches coming out and holding you down while the rest of the team beats you bloody. For the moment being, though, Cincinnati Fear, they are setting up around this Rift Herald. It will be spawning quite soon, so getting some deep vision over there. Wild card. Realizing what's up, they're trying to get some control in the mid lane of their own in the process, even calling Zamudo over. Yeah, you can see how fear are... Oh, hold on. What? what? Oh, they got him. What? That was brutal, dude. And here we go. Fight continues. Wildcard holding on, but no longer for kill. As the ultimate runs through, it locks down Zamudo, but Zamudo incredibly tanky at the moment, willing to take it on the chin. A one-for-one one trade kill for Minui. That ends up being a good response there from Wildcard to get the kill. It costs the teleport, but Fear are able to answer back. The pressure here that Fear are going for is because they want to get control of the topside river. They want and need that second Rift Herald, but because of that fight, they lost the opportunity. But right now, Lens is going to lose his flash. Lose his flash, gets snared up. JJ couldn't follow through, didn't have Solar Flare uh, off cooldown. 
That interaction was disgusting, by the way. Yep. That uh, steadfast presence plus I the look. heroic charge. Yep. Oh god. Yeah. Let's see it again. Let's see it again. What did I say? Steadfast presence gonna get so much value this game from everyone on the oh. side of fear. And Manui, he just noticed too late. I mean, you gotta respect the quick response from fear to be able to get a kill back, but they lost the pressure that they were hoping for on the top side river. And even after all is said and done here, Shochi needs to recall. And that leads to no one going for the Rift Herald. And I mean, no one getting it suits Wildcard just fine. And again, Cincinnati Fear in a position where they haven't exactly taken the driver's seat. It's Wildcard who are kind of dictating the pace of the game and Fear relying on Shochi to clutch something out in this mid game. He will play for the side lanes, has teleport available. So shoving in this wave will dictate a response from Wildcard. It's Ligo who's looking to match. And we're getting to this point where Wildcard's comp is going to get even stronger. The two items there for Saligo, for Lens, are going to make this game even more difficult for Cincinnati Fear. We've seen this team in a lot of situations maybe fight more than they should in situations where they don't need to, but we've also seen them have incredibly clutch moments. This is one of them. Oh, looking for Saligo. Solar Flare goes down. Too much crowd control. Even with the flash, he's not going to get away. Minui will claim him. That's what Fear need to do. They need to keep on fighting against what I usually say when I talk about this team, Eric. What I'm trying to say is this <laughs> is one of those opportunities where they need to fight. They need to be the ones to push the pace of this game and force these angles, these unfavorable team fights yeah. against Wildcard. Because again, if Wildcard can keep you at bay, they're gonna take you out of this game. All right, so a turret taken, Cincinnati Fear. Will it cost them JJ? Looking for the chase right now. Hey, he's gonna, gonna need sidestep uh, piercing arrow. Could get the flash out. Oh. No! We'll just fall. And that's the problem right now for Cincinnati Fear. It's kind of hard for them to get something without something being given right back to Wildcard. Right, and even there, Rift Herald summoned. They are gonna prevent. Oh, maybe they won't prevent it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Nature's Grasp from Kiel. Shochi is there. Oh, Remember, Shochi has the whole, all the income for Cincinnati Fear. Would be a big pick if Wildcard could get onto one. him, but Kiel is down. Shochi, Keeper's Verdict in his hand. Able to punt one away. Saligo teleports in, gets a Shock Blast, but lands onto nothing. Piercing Arrow's coming through, and that poke is felt by Wildcard. Still, you're able to turn something around. Kiel, overestimating how tanky that he is in these skirmishes, ends up getting punished for it. Zamudo. Uh, he's very tanky right now. He should be fine. But Lens is the one under a lot of pressure here. Fear aren't done. Yeah, and Fear, they need to get forward before the poke takes them out of this. Yeah. And they do have five right now. The health bars are getting lower, which means the momentum is starting to shift into the hands of Wildcard. Philip can't really get the 1v1 against Samudo right now. No. Samudo has been beasting that, so even the front line of Wildcard can really get in your face. This makes it very difficult, but here we go. Three members all piling together for Cincinnati Fear. Buster burn. Shot comes out and waiting for the burn. Burn it down, baby. It will be a kill for Cincinnati Fear, and they oh, want more. Don Bray is in the wrong spot, but it might be the same oh case my for God, Barry. Barry drops, and Fear go forward. Philip will grab one. Don Bray, 300 health remains. Dragon Curly is coming for Pit, and now Saligo gets one on a JJ, and Shochi has arrived. Play the music, beat down, because he's ready to rip them asunder. As a Q pop from Philip will take the head of the Donger, and there we go. Cincinnati Fear fight tooth and nail to. Bring Bring it back. It is unreal. They actually walk away with a favorable trade there. Wildcard just not expecting some of these engages that Fear are going for. And it's this is what they need to do here on the side of Cincinnati Fear. They aren't going to go for the dragon. They've lost so much health and members to make that one a possibility. But this is Fear's way to win this game. You have to keep fighting Wildcard. You got to make sure any misstep, any slight. Uh, being slightly out of position gets punished severely. Look at the gold right now uh, for Cincinnati Fear. They do have a slight gold lead, but now it's no longer just Shochi. Yeah. Philip got a big, big uh, breath of life from those last couple of kills happening in that uh, fight. It's one of the beautiful things about Renekton, if you can get into the bulk of the fight and press Q once, it can flip things. For sure. And 
As far as standings go, not a whole lot has really changed here. It is Shochi and Lens at the top of the table. And it's Shochi, of course, who is number one still. You can see the gold graph, how things have gone banned back oh, and Phil's forth climbing. this series. And I think we're about to go forth. Nature's grasp onto JJ. Shock Blast does not land, but here comes Perry Ultimate coming from the sidelines, and Don Bray is out of position. JJ claims the kill. Arctic Salt on to kill. Now Zamudo trying to hold back. Double Stun is found. The Keeper's Verdict able to punt away hey. some of Cincinnati Fear. The Permafrost Stun comes through. Cincinnati Fear got what they wanted. They got a kill. The question is, do they want to start the Baron there? They're really low on HP, so I'm hoping the call is to back off. But this is just more gold. Fear keep managing to catch Wildcard unawares. Wildcard not respecting the fact that Fear could get right on top of them. No matter how tanky Zamudo is, there are plenty of ways to skip him and get to the back line. Oh, and you can see Shochi. Oh, he has the Chain of Corruptions. Can drop this on any members to try and really open up the zone for this next fight. But Wildcard instantly pull away. Len still has his flash up, so that's good for Wildcard. Now it's about spacing out this fight. Ooh, Chain of Corruption not landing. Spacing out this fight, getting that poke in before Cincinnati Fear can engage on you. Yes, exactly. And I, I mean, this is what Wildcard needs to be doing. You can see the kills in favor of Fear because they're the ones finding these angles. They're the ones getting even or even favorable trades incredibly. And a lot of this is on Shoji. The ults that he's been stealing, getting a lot of value, and we wanted him to make use of the gold he got into the early game. I mean, he's making full use of it. Currently 4-0-7 oh, on the Silas, and you see how much value he gets when he takes things like that nature's grasp. Him, the rest of Fear, they need to keep this one up if they want to win it out. But worth noting, Wildcard, their soul is coming up in about three minutes time one bad fight with fear contesting it or one bad fight from fear in general i mean wildcard can go ahead and set up at the baron and start because remember wildcard their comp's like a tick once it gets in there you cannot get them out <laughs> now here's the thing though if wildcard don't get the first setup i still feel like they forfeit this because you it, it, Chemtech's not a dragon to really get the biggest fight over. It might get you Dragon Soul, but the positioning that you're getting out of Cincinnati Fear at the very moment is not doing you any favors, and if you lose that fight, it's a lot that you're giving back over to Cincinnati Fear, including what you were just talking about, that potential Baron. That's right, and Wildcard taking the opportunity to get that first setup here. And they're trying to see if Fear will actually challenge them. Wildcard can just go ahead and start this Baron, bait out Phillips Teleport, and walk away or turn for the fight. Either way, they are the ones with a lot of options here, despite yeah. the fact that Fear are up 1,600 gold. Be careful next to that Poppy. You might both yeah. be Yordles, but Poppy is one angry one. Heroic charge against the wall can ruin your day. Losing Minui or Shochi in these fights does have big impacts in terms of the damage that Cincinnati Fear can put out. Cincinnati Fear, they have uh, gotten control over the mid lane. They're trying to transfer some pressure back over to the uh, Baron that Wildcard were setting up earlier. I would like Fear to uh, immediately take this over to Dragon's side just to make sure that soul doesn't go through. The thing is, this is Chemtech Soul. I don't think Wildcard actually care about this buff as much as the threat of picking up a soul. And what I mean by that is yeah. Wildcard, they have three Drakes. Fear, of course, as teams do, generally have to respect that and try to set up for the Dragon like you highlighted. But Wildcard, I'm certain, are going to focus on that Baron because that's the way they can actually get a gold lead in this game and further the control that they still have. The Wildcard are now headed towards that side of the river. Uh, dragon side. And no one from Fear is really in position just yet. It does look like Fear are going for the resets to try and get a contest on this. Or they're just going straight for the fight. Beatdown Teleport comes out from Shochi. And he's walking over to Lens. Takes away the Chain of Corruptions. Solar Flare does not land. Don Bray will get away. Cincinnati Fear so far empty-handed. But that ultimate in the pocket of Shochi. Waiting for his moment to throw it, B. Yeah, he's looking. You see him fishing, and the teleport's coming through from Zamudo as well. We got 15 seconds till the dragon spawns, and it's looking like both teams want to do a little scrap for it, have a little dance. Yeah. But of course, it's Fear who are going to get pushed out. They're waiting 
for an opening. Chain of Corruptions. It lands on Zamudo though. That's not the target you want. Cincinnati Fear are going to go on retreat. Saligo hops in, brings down the hammer. Going That's golden one. for a while. Perry will get Saligo. It's an instant return on damage, but Look there's Minui on check. Goes right after Duo King. Len's still trying to get some work, but it's Minui who can hop forward. And oh. JJ with the Zenith Blade doesn't find the shield of Daybreak. A flash away from Lens will get a kill back over to Wildcard. It's a scrap. It's a two for two. Samudo wants to find more, but can't get it just yet. One more piercing arrow goes through, but this is Wildcard with positioning on the dragon. And you can see it, gold lead or not, Wildcard's comp is so much easier to play than Fear's. Lens was unchecked throughout the entirety of that team oh. fight. So Fear, because the dragon is being taken, they're gonna take this opportunity. Wildcard are pinging it. They know something yeah. is going on, but it's just Zamudo going to check. I think Fear actually have this. Zamudo's gonna be there. Uh, he gets a really good angle on a heroic charge, so he might be able to uh, return something in terms of any kills that Wildcard might look for right after Fear takes this. And oh, it's only going to be one That's that worth. gets sacrificed, but still worth for Cincinnati Fear. Fast thinking for Fear to get themselves the Turo Baron buff, and it's only at the cost of their top laner. I, we call that worth every day of the week, and that quick thinking will get them that Baron buff to allow them to push out these waves a little easier. And of course, that gold you pick up up front, which is super valuable. Now, Shochi. Oh, this is what's so oh, good about the Silas getting fed is he can soak a lot of damage, but when there's three members wailing at you, eventually you will break. And Cincinnati Fear, it was a good play to start off, but a big slip up from Shochi. Yeah, he didn't quite have the Zanyas. It's about to come off of cooldown there. Maybe he could have bought enough time uh, bought enough time to make it work, but unfortunately he just gives over his life. And another one of the Baron buffs. So Fear are down to three, and of course with Shochi off the map, your most fed member by a country mile, you gotta pay your respects and stay off the map. Stay near your turrets, as Fear still at least have their tier twos up and available. All right, looking at the map right now, what can Cincinnati Fear really get done uh, with this Baron buff? Fortunately for them, it's still a poke comp that they're going against, so they can try and pressure out some of these side lanes uh, and get the minion waves going. Uh, they got to be careful about the positioning, though, because it's always that situation where Zamudo or Kill will catch you out on the blink of an eye. They are not afraid to engage. So Cincinnati Fear, as they try and get the wave states back into their favor with this Baron buff, buys a lot of time for Wildcard to uh, continue running the map. Right, and you can see it. Two items on Saligo, two items on Lens, both working towards that Cyrilda's Grudge. One thing I want to note too, Minui about to reach an important power spike on the Tristana. Not just item number three, but it is that Lord Dominic's Regard, which will actually be a big difference maker there in the amount of damage he'll able he'll be able to put out into people like Kiel Zamudo, who are so tanky right now looking at those stats. As long as Fear are able to find the engages they've been looking for this whole time, Minui actually will have the opportunity to DPS these members down. And we saw a quick look there. Minui, who was getting dogged on in the laning phase, has caught up to Lens in terms of gold. Now here we go. Playing with the lanes right now means that Cincinnati Fear start to go down into that bottom lane. Turret gonna be picked up. And the gold still climbing for Cincinnati Fear, but this is what Fear were hoping for. It's no longer just Shochi and a bunch of blue. Minui has climbed up. Phila has climbed up. Cincinnati Fear are getting their solo lanes. They're getting their carries, the, uh, the economy they need. All right, and I'm waiting to see if Minui is able to make that full purchase just yet. And oh, there it is. Flipped. That's the LDR. I mean, that's a big, big item coming through here. We still... I still maintain that wild card in terms of how these comps are interacting. Have a clear advantage here as we've seen over and over this game, but fear are not afraid to punish any mispositions and really force the situation there in ways wild card haven't been expecting this game. Kind of like this. Oh, Perry coming out of nowhere. Solar Flare finds its mark on the new kill. Damage. Kill tries to turn it around, but look at the DPS of fear. They chase away anyone who wants to be part of this fight. Zamudo has arrived. And the fight now called off. And that's just the key. It's been the same over and over again. Get on top of Wildcard when they aren't set up properly. It doesn't amount to a kill, but you do get Zamudo's teleport. And you get to walk away from it. So everyone's going to go back to normal. 
And the thing to keep an eye on is that the fact that Fear are still very competitive in this game and actually have leads in their carry positions does bode well for them for, what is it, Eric? The Elder Dragon that's coming up in two minutes. Most powerful buff in the game that's spawning at the same time as the Baron is going to be up for grabs. And you got to imagine both teams are going to want a oh. piece of that. Yeah, that's going to be our big team fight timer. A minute and 45 before that becomes a reality. So purchases, got to scrap up your last ones. Go to the lanes. Get that economy rolling for what you're going to bring. That final fight. Potential final fight that can be over there down in the bottom. I still like the fact that you do have fear setting up these wave states. Now they had Philip down there in the bottom lane shoved a wave right in Sligo. Uh, same thing for uh, Shochi in the top lane. Getting these wave states set up, very, very important if you do want to contest. We are getting some news in just now that FlyQuest Challengers have won game number one against Supernova. Why is this important? Because both of these squads, FlyQuest and Fear, are racing to be the first team to get a 6-0. Also that, Supernova, that's it. They're eliminated from playoff contention. They no longer have a way to get into the top eight. It's now between Maryville University and Team Fish Taco, who we're seeing later. But back to this game. Remember, Elder in 50 seconds, everybody wants to fight. Yeah, Shochi. Oh, he's able to take the ultimate right off of kill, and this is going to spread wild card thin. Minui pops away, but Zamudo, a great one. keeper's verdict. Shochi's in. Fear will find one on to Don Bray. But going golden for a little bit, Shochi is able to flash out. Chase through with the heroic charge. Harry, the new in no man's land, wants to turn it in the name oh, of this fear. Is but here's Minui, reset city, double kill found. Now popping off onto Zamudo. But Zamudo, the big boss of wild card, the only survivor left. Philip steps up with a ruthless predator to stun him, and Cincinnati fear find the ace. It's the full ace, 40 second spawn timers. We don't need the elder anymore. Minui, who was strong. Struggling in that lane phase comes back in a big way for Cincinnati Fear, and they have everything they need to end game one. Cincinnati Fear against one of their toughest opponents, their fellow provisional team from last spring, now at their door, breaking it down. And remember, Wildcard has close. always been around that top position. Fear has been fighting to break themselves free of that narrative that says they are the bar, that they only beat who's who is worse than them, they only lose to who's better than them. Well, look at this, Wildcard, they're falling at the hands of Cincinnati Fear. They're ready to break that bar. And wow, it got really close to the end. Almost everyone from Wildcard managed to respawn, but it wasn't enough. Fear had just enough time, and what an incredible comeback in a game where the draft was really not in their favor. That ability to clutch up and team fight your way to victory is something we love to see about Fear in spring. And they keep showing up to they keep showing that to us again here in summer. And it, it was well executed. It was really well executed from level yes. one, realizing the situation that was going to happen in the bot lane, yeah. realizing that, you know, Lens and Donbray were going to control that lane if you didn't have an early impact, and boy, did they. You know what I want to, you know what I'm thinking looking at these damage charts? The fact that Wildcard, or rather, Wildcard out damaged everyone basically, with the exception of mid lane. It, uh, they out damaged their oh. opponents in every way. I really want to know what the damage mitigation was for everybody here because, of course, Fear still led in kills. They were able to finish them off and also manage to walk away from a lot of these situations without giving away too many lives. Yeah, and of course, uh, Lens being on the Varus means that you're just going to have the high damage for all the piercing arrows he was landing yeah. off of that. But, but it didn't Cincinnati matter. Fear. Yeah, Cincinnati Fair, it didn't matter because when they fight, they fight with purpose, man. We're going to throw it over to Short Break. Return, Summer will catch us on the other end, and we'll have the Rally Cry Halftime Show.